Welcome back to Play Tessie. It's episode 45, and if you're listening on Drop Day, it is February 28th. Bad news for you, it's not the last day of the month this year. So sorry about that. But episode 45 is the Pedro Martinez episode and Dick Pohl. Bet you guys didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Maybe you did. Sammy There's did. much debate before this. I can't believe you just said that live. Sammy got you on that. On what? No, it's real. No. It's real. No, it's not. No, Dick Pohl is real. Don't, real. don't try to trick him, Coop. Dick Pohl is real. real. Who's I gaslighting real. you? Who's gaslighting you? It's Coop. Coop's the it's, gas. I won't gas let this happen to you, Gordo. It's not real. Wait, Dick does saying, real. Does saying, does saying his name hurt the algorithm for the first five no, minutes? No, the algorithm doesn't <laughs> care about that. The, the algorithm, algorithm doesn't probably, care about Dick Pohl. Yeah, I mean, if the algorithm <laughs> has any sort of you know good conscience, it would know that Dick Pohl is an important member of the baseball community, and he should be respected. And um, a little competition for the playpen. If you can get your Instagram algorithm to just show Dick Pohl, we will give you something. Oh God! Okay, Dick yeah. Pohl. You're Dick a Pohl. you're he a true me. you're a true yeah. sociopath if you can find a way to get your Instagram algorithm or any algorithm to show you Dick Pohl highlights the whole time or whatever. My Instagram algorithm is just all pizza. <laughs> Mine's like dogs and baseball. Oh my God! It is all pizza, Gordo. Um, Dick Pohl. Negative two and a half war, 5.05 ERA, 25 wins, 37 losses. That's Did not Famer, make it into the Hall of Fame. What? Oh, yeah. so he got snubbed. Yeah, he got snubbed. So, But this is the official podcast of Seinfeld Characters Pitching for the Red Sox, also known as the official Red Sox podcast of WEI. We've got a really cool interview with you guys today with Red Sox prospect Alex Benellis. But before we get into that, remember – Hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening. If you're on Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or Spotify, hit that subscribe or follow button, whatever they list it as, and rate us five stars and leave a comment. We don't really care what you say. Say anything. Tell Sammy he's old. But yeah, if you're on YouTube, old. hit that subscribe button on YouTube to WEI. Uh, hit that thumbs up on this video and follow us on the socials at Play Tessie on both Twitter, X, and Instagram. Guess what? But, we're also we're on Threads as well. Ugh. Ooh, yeah that has like I, a dirty i throw some stuff it. up there sometimes Ugh. when i forget, when yeah. i remember it's there i don't like threads because every time i go to put something in my story like when you send us a little scene from our episode i always accidentally hit threads and it takes me to a new page and then i gotta go back and so i detest threads with every fiber of my being it sounds like something you need to talk to the zuck about the zuck mark zuckerberg the zuck yeah, he yeah, owns Zuck. Yeah. You know, like uh, the, from the social network. Yeah. Would yeah, you would friend. you rather John Henry or Mark Zuckerberg as the Red Sox owner? Uh, I'd, I'd at least throw uh, a dart now. At least John at Henry. least Zuckerberg, you could throw a dart. Maybe he'll spend money. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, I have a take. John Henry is the best owner the Red Sox have ever had. He is. Followed by that is a take. Uh, followed by right now, he sucks. So there you go. Yeah, it's both. Both are true. It's the weird part. It's the weird part that my brain does all these gymnastics. Like, yes, probably the best owner the team's ever had. Yes, he has completely fallen off in that regard. And now he don't care. Someone posted a video of him going nuts in Colorado in 2007 when the Red Sox clinched, when our boy Pap uh, ended the game Good to stuff. win the second World Series in three years. And then John Henry's going nuts in the seats and with, with Tom Werner. And where is that guy? Where is that guy? Where, Not here. John, where's that boy? Find that boy in you. Find that boy in you, John. That's what we need. We need him to have a, what is it, aberration? Like a like an angel will come to him in the middle of the night and be like, John, find the youthful side of yourself. Be the old John Henry. And he'll wake up and go, <gasps> Kurt Schilling. <laughs> I need to get Kurt Schilling out of retirement. No, no John, no, no, no. Jordan Montgomery. Okay. Have you guys thought about how they're going to handle that in the Netflix doc? Uh, honestly, yes. I think they're gonna no sell him. They're gonna. Show I know this. Are, should we save this for enough said? I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's jump into Alex, and then we'll get into that for enough said. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Nice. All right. Well, you got me, Sammy, Coop, and we're gonna be joined by Alex Benella shortly. We got a great interview for you guys. So let's just jump right into it. Here's our interview with Alex Benella. We're joined by Red Sox corner infield prospect Alex Benella, friend of the program 
friend of the Bradfoe show, but making his play Tessie debut today. How's it going, Alex? How's spring training going so far? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me, first off. Uh, spring training's going good. Been down here for about three, three and a half weeks now. Got down for early camp, so it was nice to get out of that Wisconsin weather. You know, I, I got on the flight, it was like 10 degrees, and I got down here, it was like 75, 80. Immediately got sick, because like, I was not used to this weather. I don't know if it was allergies or what, but it took me a week to get used to it. But no, it's going good. Workout's going good. Got got to play in some games, so it's going good so far. So I have to ask, and we were just we were just talking about this a little bit before we jumped on. But for the people that don't know, we Coop and I, not not Sam, we didn't know Sam yet, but us and Alex were in a fantasy football league organized by Bradfo two seasons ago, and Coop. I'll flex for you, Coop. Coop won the league. I was Vanellis- also commissioner, so there's a bit of collusion there, but we're just not going to that That was a little sketchy. We had some sketchy rules, some weird special teams things. I, I want to say, like, Johnny. Oh, I think I made I, field goals like five points. Dude, I got you made like kick returns. Like, if you returned a kick 90 yards, you got like nine points. If you look at the rules before you draft, you wouldn't have an issue. I, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> So my, my question is, do you have any memories of that, of that league or that group chat? <laughs> yeah, it was more of the, the group chat and everyone texting back and forth, you know, throughout the week. And after, you know, Monday, after the Monday night games ended, uh, it was just cool to be a part of, you know, there's a lot of big names in that, in that group chat. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, I'll say famous names, you know, house, household names, you know. And uh, it was cool to be a part of that, uh, even though my team sucked. Uh, I'll blame it on injuries. And, um, but no, it was fun. It was fun being a part of that. Um, yeah, I just wish I could have, you know, done a little better in the league. So do you, do you get the same reaction as, you know, like us commoners when you start getting Johnny Gomes motherfucking you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's pretty cool because, I mean, you, you, you don't, you know, see the the fun side of a lot of these guys. You just see the baseball, you know, whoever. And you don't see what they are like outside of baseball, you know, with their buddies and in like a, you know, competition setting, like, you know, fantasy football is. It's very competitive, a lot of shit talking. And, uh, you know, it was just cool to see that guys like yeah. that, um, you know, they're, they're just like every other person when it comes to that stuff. You know, they, they, talk, their, they talk their shit and, they have fun with it and they're not scared to, you know, have a little fun. Is there a league going on this year with the teammates? Uh, so last year we started a dynasty league. Uh, with a, we, had, we got 10 guys throughout like Portland and Greenville guys, you know, guys that we've got really close with. We got a 10 man league in that. And yeah, that's super fun. Cause I mean, it's just every year you get, you get the same team, you draft rookies and, you know, you got to be smart. And you got, you know, the dude going, you know, w- one win throughout the seasons, tanking for the number one pick. And, and then you got the guys that, you know, drafted super, you know, old guys that got one or two more years left, but their team was really good this year. So, you know, Dy- I like Dynasty, um, especially like in that setting, because, you know, you keep the guys coming back and your team's good one year. Well, you know, maybe the next two years that, that team's going to be pretty bad. That's some hardcore stuff. The dynasty, like I've always, yeah, I've never played. Scouting in- and last yeah. scouting. Who won the first year? <sighs> who won that? Um, I don't know who won, but I know Tyler Esplin got last because we're waiting for his punishment. <laughs> we're waiting for his punishment, which is he has to do a, a full NFL combine and record it and post it. Wow, so, that's <laughs> tough. No, <laughs> no. So, we're waiting for that one to come out. So one more football question, and then we'll get into some baseball talk. Jordan Love, top 10, QB, yes or no? Man, he's yes. getting there. He's getting there. I, I'm not going to put a number on it, but what he did, you know, I want to say after like week nine or 10 to throughout the, you know, rest of the season, it was super fun to watch. And, you know, was I worried at the beginning of the year after, you know, going from far to Rogers and obviously Rogers being my favorite person ever. Um, I was scared. I was sad. You know, I didn't have high expectations, 
And then just seeing what he did with that group of guys, you know, talented, obviously, but young, you know, youngest team to make the playoffs since, you know, like the eighties or something like that. Wow. Um, yeah. And so that's, you know, super fun as a fan, just, you know, the next few years should be great. It's crazy. I remember your Packers were, I think three and six or something like that on Thanksgiving. And at that point, like we know we're all Pats fans and we all know the Patriots, like we're just rooting for everyone else to win so we can get that draft pick. And I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there rooting for the Packers to win games, thinking that they're going to be in the draft conversation. And then all of a sudden, yeah. and all of a sudden they're in the playoffs. It's crazy. And, we shouldn't, and the, the thing that sucks the most is like, you got to be happy with our season. What we did, like beating the Cowboys in the playoffs and then losing to the 49ers, like can't be mad because nobody expects us to be there, you know, way, you know, past our expectations, but we should have won that game. And that that's the part that sucks because then then we go to you know we would have went to what Detroit and we would have you know we beat Detroit and I think you know we're talking about maybe going to a Super Bowl if we beat the 49ers. Oh, we're, you're getting to that part I'm getting now. There. He's I'm there. there. Yeah. It's like, but it's like you can't get mad because we shouldn't have even been in the playoffs. Uh, you know, no, like that's fair. It's, it's just close. me. So would you would you trade six Super Bowls for smooth transitions between quarterbacks? <sighs> I mean, because you've never had football where you're like pounding your head against the wall, really. Like, never. We're at that point. Just when Rogers got hurt, that's about it. Sucks. <laughs> Six Super Bowl. You I'm happy for you, but it sucks. Oh, man. man. I believe. Yes. I believe. It's crazy when you got a good young quarterback. <clears throat> Coop. <Yeah. clears throat> <laughs> you, hey, Mac didn't have the system around him. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I'll yeah. say that much. <laughs> yeah. He was uh, working against the odds. I'd rather talk about anything than Mac Jones right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then let's let's move into baseball then, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into this because Brad Fo tabbed you as the best shape of your life champion <laughs> this year going into the spring. He was pretty That's fired cute. up when he saw him. So, two part question on that is: How does it feel to get that label from Brad Fo? And two, what did you do this offseason that went into earning that award? Yeah, I mean, first off, any label coming from him is great. You know, he's awesome. He's hilarious. But, uh, you know, no, I went to the offseason. Um, obviously, being a corner infielder, you know, you know, the nutritionists and strength staff, they want you, you know, being big, muscly, you know, being able to hit the ball hard. Um, you don't really got to worry about speed too much. So, you know, I, I, you know, went in the weight room, you know, I was eating a whole bunch, drinking a lot of protein shakes. Like, I was still in, like, really good shape, but I – I just felt like, like a brick, you know, just really stiff, wasn't really, you know, agile the, the way that I used to be, you know, my first year in pro ball, at my days at Louisville, you know, I was still like 215, like still not a small dude, but I was able to move and I was still playing the corner infield. I was like having trouble recovering, like I was always sore. I had, you know, a quad strain, a quad strain, a hamstring strain, you know, missed a bunch of games with that and like just the whole season, it's like my body just wasn't feeling right. Like I couldn't, my body couldn't handle the two. I was like 230, 235, and my body just couldn't handle all that weight. And I just didn't feel right. And so I went in this off season. I was just like, hey, like I want to get down to, you know, 215 when I felt good. I was playing well, still hit the ball hard, and just, you know, ate a lot of rice and chicken. Um, you know, I lived at home this off season, so my mom cooked for me a lot. Um, a lot of ate a lot of healthy food, did a lot of cardio, a lot of uphill walking on the the treadmill. treadmill the Danny my DeVito, best uh, or not the Danny DeVito? Who's the Danny uh, Cutlets? Danny oh, DeVito is the uh, actor, oh, or Tommy yeah, Cutlets? Tommy DeVito. Tommy, 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 I just call Tommy DeVito Danny, Danny DeVito, DeVito but <laughs> that's, that's just the, you're different. living that lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, so I just you know just doing a lot of a lot of cardio and just eating right, and you know the best part about it is you know I lose you know, over 15 pounds, but I'm still pushing the more weight in the weight room. You know, like my lifts didn't go down at all after losing that weight. So just getting stronger and better shape, moving better, uh, more flexible, got more mobility. So set the day, just feel better. That, that was the, that was the main point. And, you know, did that this off season. It's been a quite a journey for you to get here. And I want to know what it's like. I believe you were 21 or 22 years old when you got traded. What was it like to go through that at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, it was right after I got drafted, so I was still 21 at the time. Um, 
you know, just coming out of college, you know, drafted by my hometown team, the Brewers. And, you know, just chilling on the couch one night, get a call. It's like, what was it? 1030 at night, right before the lockout. And they're like, hey, you're, you're getting traded to the, the Red Sox. Like, thanks for everything. You know, their farm director is going to reach out. Like, you know, any questions for me, let me know. Otherwise, you know, thank, thanks for everything. Bye. And I was just like, what the heck is going on? And so, like, trying to call my agent, all this stuff. Like, he's asleep. Um, all of his assistants are, are sleeping, his two sons. And I'm like, I need to figure out what's going on here. I'm, like, thinking I'm getting prank call or whatever. I'm like, what is going on? And then I go back upstairs. My dad's, you know, watching TV and, you know, he was watching MLB Network because we are getting close to the lockout happening. So we are just chilling up there. And he comes up and, you know, my name's on the screen. He's like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was crazy, just everything happening and just having a transition, you know, finally learning a whole, you know, new group of guys that I came in with the Brewers um, you know, learning pro ball, haven't gone through a spring training yet, just kind of get my feet wet in, you know, professional baseball, trying to learn their staff. And then all of a sudden, boom, let's, let's learn a whole new group of guys and a whole new staff and a whole new organization. So yeah, it was just crazy. Um, but you know, obviously the Red Sox are a first class organization, like awesome. Um, you know, couldn't have been a better place for me to go to get better as a baseball player. But, uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was a lot of stuff happening in a short amount of time. And, you know, me, you know, you got to – I got to be ready to, you know, come in and compete and, you know, play the best of my ability no matter what. So, it, it was a lot, but it was fun. Good stuff. And and heading to Milwaukee for you in the, in the package was Hunter Renfro. Do you follow Hunter Renfro's career? Because you're, like, forever connected with him. And we, we were just discussing, like, do you root for him? Do you root against him? Like – how, how do you look at his career as it continues today? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like, obviously, you know, who, who the player is and with a, you know, a name like that and a career that he's had. Um, so it was cool, one, you know, being in a package for a name like that. And, you know, I, I, I don't really, you know, follow him like that or anything like that. It was, uh, it was more cool for me, actually, to be a part of a trade with Jackie Bradley because I, I grew up you know, actually going to the College World Series a lot as a kid. And I saw him play in the College World Series twice, and I got his autograph. And, like, he was, like, one of my favorite college baseball players. Like, him and Christian Walker are my two favorite college baseball players ever. And I got both their autographs on the same ball. And so being a part of the trade, actually, with, you know, JBJ was the coolest part of that whole thing. I was like, you know, like, I got this dude's autograph when I was 11. Like, this is sick, you know? So it was, it was pretty cool in that aspect. So I want to – one of the biggest stories of this offseason in Red Sox world is the Netflix documentary. So I'm curious, being a minor league camp, have the cameras found their way over to you guys? And, like, what has what the talk been about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously super cool. Um, you know, I'm a huge hard knocks guy with the football. So, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty similar to that. Um, but, you know, the cameras aren't really on our side, but you walk around the complex, like, obviously all the cages are together, the fields are pretty pretty close, so, you know, you see the camera people around, you see them following, following guys around, they're in the weight room, we share the same weight room, but, you know, there's not much going on with us, but, um, no, it's just cool to see, it's, it's uh, you know, I can see how it could be awkward for, for some guys, you know, with two, two big cameras in your face and a group of, you know, cameramen and following you around it's like all right i'm trying to do my work here you know like this this could be a little weird you know if i was in that position but no it's super cool um you know excited to see you know what the final result will be you know when it all co you know comes out it'd be really cool to see the behind the scenes because you know i get to see it every day but at the same time you know i'm at the minor league side you know i'm not always at in the in the big league side like when i go and travel and back up the big league games like i see you know, what goes on over there is very similar, but at the same time, I don't see everything. So it'd be cool for me to see and, and learn some stuff too. But yeah, I mean, they, they stay out of the way. They're quiet. They don't really bother anyone, but you could definitely see it. Cause they got these huge cameras, you know, <laughs> rolling around the complex. They've got Just like, you they're rolling around on segways too, right? I didn't see the segways yet, but they got like carts and stuff and these wires and, you know, there's, there's one behind the camera. There's another, you know, 
two people behind them. There's a guy with a headset directing things. It's like, yeah. It's I mean, pretty noticeable. Yeah, you can definitely tell, like, who's media and who's Netflix. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you – so – with the focus of Netflix and how this team is being talked about at like the big league level, and I'm sure you might hear some of it, uh, but how does it feel to have ownership be kind of like, even though the spotlight is on the Red Sox and Netflix is focused on the Red Sox, there's becoming a giant focus on the farm system. And we've heard the term not sacrificing future wins and knowing that you're in the farm system that is the future of this team i'm wondering kind of how you process that and how you kind of take that owner like the ownership of these guys trust a whole lot in us that we're going to be able to take this franchise somewhere yeah i mean that that's awesome and i mean you think i mean you just look at the the players we have in our farm system from you know every position you know we got outfielders infielders catchers pitchers we got all these prospects and, you know, we're ranked like top three farm system and MLB or whatever. I'm not sure what the exact number is, but, you know, we got a lot of dudes and a lot of dudes that, you know, come in and they work hard and great group of guys. And, you know, we got, what, four or five top 100 prospects. And, you know, I've got to play with, you know, three or four of them. And the best part about it is, you know, you, you would never know. And those guys are awesome guys, great teammates, great people on and off the field. And I think that's the best part. And, you know, you talk about the media, uh, like Twitter, all, all these social media outlets, you know, talking about the Red Sox a lot. And, you know, it, it's a good thing because, you know, we're the Boston Red Sox, you know, in the minor leagues and, you know, the big leagues. And it's – you think of Major League Baseball, you think of, you know, Boston Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers, you know. You think of those three teams if you're not a huge baseball fan, like – and it's cool to be a part of an organization that's huge like that. And, you know, the management believes in, in us, you know, the, these young guys. In our that's got to be like, that's got to be like a pretty, pretty great cool. feeling. It's like, refreshing. It's refreshing. Yeah. So you, you get to see these guys and closer than anyone. I mean, you are literally there with them. You're one of them. So you've had a bunch of teammates in your career so far. And who just give me one who you think you look at this guy and you say, this guy is going to be a freaking stud at the big league level. I mean, you just think of, for me, it's say down Raffaella. Um, I mean, the, the plays that I've seen that kid make. It's He's like, so smooth running. Yeah. I mean, him in center field, I've seen him make so many diving plays and, you know, robbed home runs. Like I remember last year in spring training, we're in Baltimore and he scaled the wall and robbed a home run and made it look so easy. And I remember some guy in the dugout was like, man, that's like one of the best catchers I've ever seen. I was like, that doesn't even break his top 10 I saw last year. <laughs> like, I'm like, this dude is crazy. Like, I, I, I seen him make a catch in Asheville in high when I was with Green, when we were in Greenville. We're in Asheville, and the warning is super old baseball field, like really old, like one of the worst ballparks I ever played in. And the warning track was like sand and it had these like sparkles in it. Like when you walk, like these sparkles would come up. It was really annoying. And he made a catch in the right center gap. Like he full out Superman, like best catch I've ever seen in person ever. There's no video there, obviously, because the stadium sucks. And so nobody's seen it besides us. He caught it for the third out of the inning and everyone just stood there. Like we didn't know what to do. Like everyone literally <laughs> froze. I'd never seen it. I'd never seen that in a baseball field where literally everyone, like nobody ran in, nobody like ran to him. He's like, he jumped up, he's beating his chest, you know, popping his chains, does whatever he does. He's got <laughs> swag. And everyone's just like frozen. Just like, what the heck just happened? And that was <laughs> the first time I've ever seen him in a baseball field. So, uh, I mean, the kid works hard. He's a great person. You know, he connects with everyone because he speaks like four languages or something like that. So he speaks English, Spanish, and he speaks like another language or two or something like that. I don't even know. But, you know, he can communicate with everyone, um, you know, create relationships with everyone. He's a great kid. Awesome. Apparently he made an amazing catch today, but another game that I think it was just radio. I saw all yeah. on Twitter like, what a catch, what a catch. I'm like, where's the video? Oh, well. Yeah, and that's probably not even in his top 20, I, I guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> beast, beast. Okay, one thing we have to ask about. This has been the talk, the talk of baseball. 
the uniforms. Are they are they as bad as people say? Like, what's your what's your take on the new uniforms? Personally, I love them. The material, like the material, the way they fit, amazing. I haven't tried the pants on yet. We we haven't got the pants yet, but I've seen some pictures. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how those turn out. But um, no, the jerseys, like the names on the back, you know, like some guys' names may look a little little funny with you know the size of the last name and the font or whatever. But um, but just the material of the jersey, um, I love it. It's a lot more like athletic fit, um, fits tighter. It's more stretchy, just a lot more comfortable to wear, especially in like hot days. It's way more breathable. But they they do look a little funny with some of the guys' last names on the back. And like I said, I haven't tried the pants yet, so we'll see. What well, that. they're functional. They're functional in a good way. It's just that aesthetically, they're a little funky yes. looking. I guess. Yes. Yeah, the way they look. Um, may look a little weird, but wearing them, ten out of ten. Wow. Okay. I, I would say most of the guys where I, like the letters have looked bad is the guys with shorter names. So they should. Just yeah. Yeah. Get, get, short names get more letters weird. in your last name. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, I feel like I feel like my last name looks good on it, so I, like I might be a little biased. Yeah. As long as seven get, like, letters the nice might be the perfect it. jersey name length. I think seven letters is kind of ideal. Yeah. I believe that's yeah, where so. Leonard's at. Yeah. Did you see, how about this guy on Texas? This guy's got a hyphenated last name. This one went viral because it goes from like one hip to the other. His yeah, last it's like name. like a rainbow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bursick, I've seen that one. Bursick Harrington. He's a prospect <laughs> for Texas. It literally, it's like more than Salta La Macchia, which we all yeah. know and love. That's when you need to become like a journeyman and play on a bunch of different teams so different people can – like a Yadimir Yager type fan club when you yeah. see those where everyone has the different jerseys of where they played. Yeah. If you have like the like the horseshoe type name, you got to become one of those guys. Yeah, a t- uh, what's the the Marlins Tim Spoonie Barger from? Like, oh Tim- wow! <laughs> there, I love that you just brought that name into this. Tim Spoonie Barger. Okay, but your last name what uh, seven letters we said, so that's good. But like less might be in trouble. If you have like a short yeah. last. Name. Okay. Yeah. So right, before good. before we jump into some rapid fire here, one more question. Uh, going back to your teammates, you, you were teammates really briefly with Kyle Teal last year, and his his alter ego, his DJ alter ego, is kind of captivating fans right now. Did, did he DJ for you at all while he was up there with you guys? And have you heard his new remix? Uh, I have not heard the new one. I saw videos of him doing it in Greenville, but he didn't bring his DJ set when he got called up to Portland. I think uh, he shipped his car or something, and he left it at home, something like that. So he didn't have his DJ set, but he, he was talking about it all the time. That kid is a character. He is so funny. Uh, good dude to be around. Freaking hilarious. Um, but, no, I have not heard the new remix or whatever he's doing. Um, but I saw videos of him DJing, and it's pretty legit. He's pretty good. So I'll give, can, it, I'll give it to him. Can we get, like, a promise? What was it? I- was the the Bears had like a club that they did like club dub one season? Oh, and I know that you're a Packers fan, so it maybe maybe yeah, not I'm not sure as much. Not sure. So I believe they did something called like club dub where they would just have a rave and every after every win. Um, I'm just gonna put this out here: Kyle Teal getting a rave going after every uh, win this season. <laughs> oh, he will. He's there we go. Kid. He will do it. We he need videos that. of that. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. That would be great. That. But that's good that he didn't bring like right when you get called up. I feel like you can't bring your DJ stuff right away unless you go on and hit like 750. It's not like you got to wait a little bit. That's good. He kind of did it in Greenville though. He, if he was D, he couldn't have been he wasn't in Greenville. He was in Greenville quick before they called him up. I feel like Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty quick, but no, that kid's he's hilarious you know he's the type of kid where you know he, he can walk into a locker room and just fit in right away he's 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 a character i feel like the this organization just has so many good dudes and such like a big close-knit group of guys coming up through the minors right now it's really cool like we saw this as fans with like the jackie bradley like mookie Betts, like all those guys that came up around them like they were all super tight and like we saw them go on to win a world series and if it, you get similar vibes with the group that's there right now. Yeah. I but, mean, yeah, I've said it before. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all competing against each other, even though we're in the same org. And, you know, that's, you know, the weird thing about the minor leagues, you know, we're all competing for the same spot. 
in, in the big leagues. And, you know, that doesn't show at all. And it's, it's honestly like a better culture, better atmosphere than, you know, my, my college days. And it should be the opposite when you think about it. Right. And, you know, it's, it's very cool to see. I mean, you hear horror stories with other organizations, you know, guys are entitled and, and, you know, just, you know, guys with a lot of money, a lot of, you know, feel like they got a sense of entitlement, you know, high ranking, whatever, you know, they, they can do whatever they want. They act however they want. But, you know, in this org, it's no one's like that. You know, I, you know, my friends always ask me, like, who, who's your best friend in the org? And I'll say a few names. And then they say, all right, like, name one guy that you don't like. Like, you just can't stand. I'm like, honestly, I can't name one guy. Like, honestly. And so it, it's pretty cool. And it makes makes it easy showing up from, you know, I've been down here for three weeks already. And I'll be around these guys until almost October. So, you know, you better be a good dude and it just makes it easy to come in every day. You know, every day we're around these guys. It just makes it easy to show up. Was there, because that's like, I, I feel like that's a very difficult thing. Like you see it, in, it's not just, I feel like in minor league baseball, like that's in a lot of different workplaces where you kind of have to find that moment where you all gel together. And I would imagine, like you said, it's difficult for all these guys to get together and push towards the same thing because you are fighting in the same direction. But did you have a moment of, and I'm, I'm curious, like if the whole collective organization had a moment of like, Hey, we are iron sharpened iron type thing here. Like we're only all going to progress if we all progress together. Uh, was there a moment of you guys all coming together like that? Or was it just, you instantly came into the organization. There was an understanding of it. Yeah. I think you, you come in and, you know, to be a part of the Boston Red Sox, I mean, that's a huge honor right there. Um, you know, just, just the name that, of the Boston Red Sox, just that name, you know, you're, you're not bigger than that. And I think people realize that. And, you know, we, we, we grind every day. I mean, we work our, our asses off together. You know, we're fighting in the weight room. We're fighting in the cage, fighting, taking ground balls together. And I think, just a sense of, you know, everyone's going through the same thing, the ups and downs, you know, of a, of, of a tough season, playing really, you know, really good competition. Um, you're not going to hit 500. You know, you're going to go through struggles. You're going to go, you're going to go on a hot streak. And I just think that everyone understands that everyone's here for each other. Everyone, you know, goes through the same thing. We're all, you know, grinding this out together. Um, you know, let, let's be boys throughout this. And it just makes it that much easier and that much better when, you know, we have success with each other. All right. Before we get you out of here, we've got rapid fires. We, we have to, we have to name this segment. We gotta, we'll come, we'll come together. We'll name this segment because we, we got to do some rapid fires every time we do one of these, but let's get you started first. You believe in aliens. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yes. All right, we'll take it. Favorite video game as a kid? Uh, Modern Warfare 2. Ooh, nice. that's that was solid my one. first Call of Duty game, too. All right, one through four, power rank the seasons. Uh, winter four, spring three, summer two, fall one. Wow. That's an interesting order. I'm a deer hunter, so fall. Ah, that's fair. That and sense. the weather in Wisconsin is beautiful in the fall. So, okay. Favorite junk food? Sour Patch Kids. Oh, good call. It's a great answer. Wait, wait, the the regular ones or the watermelons? Watermelons, my favorite. There we go. Yeah, yeah. A plus. I like the alternating players, but I know everyone else likes the watermelons. I know I'm I'm the outlier there. All right. I love who was who was the number one on your Spotify rap this year? If you use Apple, who would have been number one? Uh, it was Morgan Wallen. Country boy, I love it. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, pre and post game meal. Pre would be a Chipotle bowl. Um, post game, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go different here. So if there's, I don't like the food at the field. I'll Uber eat Applebee's. Wait, you, oh, you're in Portland and you do Applebee's? Well, everything closes early in that's Portland. That's fair. You can't go out. You can't do anything after. Quick, so quick rapid fire. Uh, favorite restaurant in Portland then? Um, Portal. Oh, oh solid. Oh, 
Yeah. Solid. My God. That's got to be so great to like, like you see some of these minor league cities and you're like, uh, not so nice. And then you land in Portland, man, like such a, I love oh, that's so one good. of my favorite cities in the world. It's awesome. I'm yeah, surprised it's awesome. You, do you have any, I, it's very affordable to live at home. I understand that I've done that, but have you had the itch to stay in Maine at all over season? I feel like that fits you. Yeah, not really. I got, I got so many friends and family back home. Um, obviously my hunting land in, in Wisconsin uh, I, I can't I can't leave that. Okay. Not even dabble hunting in Maine? You get a moose? Do they have moose in Wisconsin? <laughs> yeah, no, no moose in Wisconsin, no. Uh, you Did you ever I mean, like social media activation that the Red Sox should do with you is they should have you because you hunt and then this isn't the same thing, but they should have you do like a ride along with a lobster fisherman because there's like John, John Farrell. Farrell. John Farrell, right there. <laughs> Form, former Red Sox World Series manager, John Farrell, that, just go out lobster boating with him. Is that, that viral uh, that viral lobster fisherman from Maine? I'll send it to you guys after. It's, he's like a TikToker, and he's huge. Captain, uh, can't remember, but he's huge. We should have you do a ride along with him. That'd be great content. <laughs> I've never heard of this. You have to send this to me. I'll get a right the, You guys ever seen Wicked Tuna? Oh yes. Yeah. That's that's up there. I think it's close. Yeah, yeah Wicked I mean, like Tuna that's is, Spell it's, Wagon Bank. It's Maine, and and then I think it's also uh, Gloucester as well. I like right? Yeah, love Gloucester. That's like that's the Bradford neck of the woods because that's near. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a he's a North Shore boy. Before our last rapid fire question, do you know? Did you guys ever go to Becky's Diner or Punky's while you were in while you were in Maine? No, I don't think so. Well, Punky's is Punky's is crap food, but it's good food. Becky's Diner, I recommend. That place is good. But last rapid fire question. Is it have a catch or play catch? Play catch. Thank God. Yep. Yeah. I'm waiting catch. for the first person to say have a catch. Because no one says it. it. No one <laughs> says it. I feel like that's Wait. from like 1895. Yeah, right? I was yes. say, that's like old school. Like old school, old school. You'd be huh. surprised anyone, that, how anyone many that says that they say use it. it is just doing it to be a contrarian. <laughs> I got friends that that say it. They they like it's not they even just to beat. Like they actually say it. Like we're like in college, coop. Like, like oh, let's go have a catch on the mall. It's like what are you even saying? Jokesers. That's what they are. <laughs> but the, the, we we have a catch. I, I can't like. Yeah, do, no. do you know anyone, Alex, who says have a catch? If if one of your coaches on the Red Sox said that, would you think of them differently? Well, I'd be like, what? What did you say? that's what this is how you get onto the netflix uh doc you just use have a catch with everyone so you become that guy and then you're an undeniable character to put on the have a catch guy yeah just like a scallop cap and like a 1800s baseball let's have a catch boys (laughs) there's no way you could be a professional baseball anything and say have a catch. There's no way we get anyone on this show that says that. I took the trolley to Texas today. (laughs) <laughs> oh we're gonna let you get out of here man but from from the bradfo show minor league correspondent to to making the play tessie debut, play tessie debut we appreciate you co- appreciate you coming on man thank you yeah thanks for having me this is awesome big thanks to alex Benellis for hopping on with us and making his play tessie debut that was a hell of a time and and i it got me thinking because we were talking before the interview about John Henry a little bit. And we were talking in the interview about, or at the end of the interview about have a catch versus play catch. What would John Henry say? Have a catch or play catch? Oh, John Henry would say have a catch. I think he's too corrupt. I think he'd say play catch. John Henry would have one of those gloves that looks like it's a hand from 1901. And he'd be like, I bought this from the dollar store for only a nickel. And then I made up a whole dollar's worth of candy afterwards. And I got grounded for one week by my mother. <laughs> Funny of you to make fun of old people. Cause I'm old, you know, I'm yeah. Leave, I got, Coop, I got, it's like, you can, I'm you can say whatever back. you want if you're part of the group. So Sammy's elderly, so he can say what he wants. So yes. it's not elder abuse. My Do people. you get AARP magazines yet? I remember my parents starting to get them when they got, close to retirement no not yet but bro hook me up with a life alert cuz i'm trying to get a life alert (laughs) i'm trying to get tipsy and fall those aarp things my when my parents started getting those like i remember that when the first one came it it was like a it was like bad it was like they were like legitimately upset that they were getting them yeah it was like in harry potter when he gets told he's seen the (laughs) grim we should get a um 
life alert sponsor you think they'll sponsor the show oh they might sponsor yeah. you they may I'm not sponsor saying. the show i have they're like we'll sponsor you but we want sammy to do every ad read because he resonates with our audience more yes that's fair and listen that the red Sox are really going to put a lot of fans in an early grave this year so <laughs> life alert might help god sammy sammy may not be long for this planet that's sad uh, um, john henry was at walter johnson's first start for the senators <laughs> Hell yeah. So let's look. We're just going to jump into some enough said before we get out of here. But Pat's not here. Pat wasn't here during the interview, but he has enough said that he wants to pass along. So I'm going to do that and then I'll open the door for one of you. Actually, I'm going to deliver. I'm going to give Pat's and then I'm going to give mine. So I'm going to do back to back. Pat says, salads are for rabbits. Real men eat meat. I don't know. Was that supposed to be a message for Alex in his working out? Or is that just. I don't know. I'm not I mean, sure. Lettuce is Pat, pretty good. But Pat, be careful because some of the fighters I work with are vegan slash vegetarian. And Ooh, they wouldn't yeah. like that comment. You can get eat. you can get your uh plant proteins. Those are pretty healthy. My old uh, roommate used to have uh he used to put pea protein in his shakes, like from peas. You have pea in his protein? Okay, that's how I took it too, Coop. That was the most low it. hanging, low hanging fruit. You got both of you. It yeah, was- and Cooper the Pooper isn't. I had to hear that last episode. <laughs> Cooper? <laughs> Yo, Gordo. Cooper the Pooper. All right. Maybe I should change his contact in my phone to Pooper Leonard instead of... Okay, real rich. Today we found out that Coop has Gordo's name wrong in his phone after we've known each other for like two years almost. Maybe so- Gordo shouldn't have locked out the podcast account. That's true. I did do that. I locked our megaphone account. We, we, we needed Coop to, to bring it back to life. I locked this out, but I am Nate in his phone, which is a travesty. So I changed Coop's name to, from Cooper Leonard. He's now Copper Leopard in my phone. Mine was an honest mistake. Yours is more nefarious. Oh no, mine is like that's what's malicious. The right word? Yes, that's the right word. Mine is malicious. I'm coming yeah. for you. Malicious. Good words. Good words. But, All right, Gordo, you're next. Yeah, my enough said. I'm going first because mine mine has to do with that with that trade that we talked about the Benellis, Hamilton, Jackie Bradley Jr. for Hunter Renfro trade. That trade happened. I'm just that was the night before the lockout, or like the lockout happened at midnight that night. So that was like a buzzer beater trade, and the lockout happened December first, going into December second. My birthday is December first, so like great birthday present for me that day second birthday present i got that day was i got covid that day and so i was feeling like complete trash awful birthday and i i fell asleep early i wake up in the middle of the night and i see that jackie bradley jr got traded to the red Sox, and i was like nope this is not real i'm hallucinating like not a real thing and i went back to sleep very much believing that there was no chance like i was like dream Dream Gordo mind, like you you have like you have to be better than that. That's way too ridiculous. It's not real. And evidently I woke up and it was real. So that was my experience with that trade. It was only just a dream. I travel back. YouTube gonna pick this up and flag it. Yeah, and uh Jackie Bradley historically went on to bounce back with the Red Sox. He won gold glove, silver slugger, and MVP votes, and the 2022 Red Sox won the division and went. To the World Series and won. This Remember? Hurt a, this hurt me a lot. You yeah. didn't have to do that. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to change. The- Gordo, I'm glad that your birthday was nice. All right. I don't know what you want to say. Appreciate right. you, buddy. Um, um, okay. Can I? Can I just go so we can get back on to what we were talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, yeah, do you mind ahead. if I go next? Yeah, yeah. Kurt Schilling's involvement with the 2004 World Series. Had the thought this thought while I was in California. I don't know if it was the altitude or whatnot. I was sleeping real good, so maybe I was real lucid. Um, but along with the in-season Netflix documentary, they're going to be having a 2004 documentary come out on that World Series team. I don't know how they tackle talking about Kurt Schilling because it's very be it. it's very clear the team's not going to address him anymore but the Netflix documentary is not a team production. Like it's very separate from what it is. And I know that Netflix and other Apple TV streaming, you know, the Brady documentary right now, I supposed to be the dynasty documentary, but it's the Brady documentary. Um, There's a little bit of bias in it and they like to dig up some bad stuff. 
So I'm wondering if we get any of that. I don't. It's tough. It depends. I think it depends who Netflix deems their target audience to be for this project. If it's a target audience that would care about kind of like, you know, controversial kind of like, I guess you could say political stuff, then yeah, they'll include stuff about Kurt Schilling. If they think, hey, this is just a sports thing, I'm sure they'll just do like the the bloody sock, the anytime you get to shut all those Yankee fans up, that quote. Yeah, I guess that, that's fair because it's contained to just the 2004 season, not so much. But I, his relationship with the players has changed. That's You got to remember that. It's you gotta remember mind. how it started though. Like this the story of that season starts with Theo going to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving at the Schilling household. And like you can't like say what you want about Kurt Schilling. You can't tell the story of that season without him. It's it, it's more of a question of are they is he gonna be in interviews for it? Because you have like you're gonna they're they're gonna like he's gonna be all over this thing because he's just such a big part of that story, but it's just will he be in the interviews? And I I kind of think he will be, but I don't know. He no. hasn't been on like any social media since, I don't believe. No, he probably thinks that like Netflix is like a government conspiracy. And That's also like, fair. Oh, it's a psyop. It's a psyop. Yeah, it's just, yeah. And they're making people eat insect meat or something weird. So um, I think they're going to cover Kurt Schilling. Like Gordo said, you really have to like him or not. He's a huge, huge part of that team and that story. So I bet it's going to be minimal coverage of Kurt and then they'll just kind of move on because there's so many other things that go into the story of the 2004 team. So uh, yeah, got to include him, but I don't think it's going to be too much and I don't think they're going to get political with it either. No, no. God, no, they're going to, I, I think if anything, if, if anything, it's the wakes though. Yeah. 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 All right. My enough said the Red Sox, this is official, right? They've signed Jason Alexander. That is like a, a done, Done deal. This is got to make the joke, not the actor. Mm -hmm. Pitcher Jason Alexander. And of course, the reaction is going to be like, oh, this guy stinks. He's 29 years old. He's pitched 18 games. He's got a 5.4 ERA. This to me is it's a small move, probably not going to have much effect. But this is the insurance that I kind of wanted for the rotation. I've spoken a bunch of times about how the bullpen got burnt out last year towards the end. And that had a big time effect on the wins and losses down the stretch. So you get a guy like Jason Alexander, he's not going to be part of your rotation. Ideally he doesn't pitch at all, but he's insurance. He can start, he can eat innings to keep the other guys fresh in an emergency situation. So I'm glad that Breslow and co have added a, a safety net of sorts to the rotation and the pitching staff in general. Uh, I don't blame anyone who's not excited about the deal. But hey, it's a little thing. It's a positive. I give it a thumbs up, though the numbers aren't great. Like I said, a safety net. Well, it's Sammy, you got to also because we we were talking about I want to say that we talked about this on the last episode. It's like are any of those three of Whitlock, Hauk, Winkowski going to be AAA depth starters? And if you're able to sign guys like Jason Alexander who have major league starting experience and like, yeah, he's not like a successful major league pitcher, but he can step in and start for you if, and when needed potentially while you build one of those guys up, like you don't need to, to start one of those guys in triple a because you have depth for when guys go down, he can cover you for a little bit while those guys get built up. Like that's important. Like the Red Sox until this move had straight up none of that. Now right. you got, I mean, ideally there's more coming. And obviously if they can sign Jordan Montgomery, that pushes guys into proper roles and you have even more depth. But like, even if you don't sign Jordan Montgomery, at least now you have someone with big league experience down there who can, who can play that role. Yeah. And I mean, they're going to sign Montgomery, but yeah, you, you nailed it. It's, um, you know, and people, like I said, it's going to get mocked. I'm probably going to get mocked for saying this, but it's a smart move. And it's uh, hopefully it keeps Josh Winkowski from starting the season in triple A as their like starter depth, though. I'm kind of conflating two situations. He would be in triple A because they believe in him as a starter. He wouldn't be in triple A as a just in yeah. case we need you kind of starter. Still, depth is depth. I'm happy they added a starter. Wouldn't mind another one, too. Never know. What's his, what, what's what's the initials of a pitcher that you might welcome adding to the organization? Mm, J M. 
trying to think. Jason Momoa. Jason Mott. Jason Mott, the Cardinals and Cubs guy, right? Beard. Yeah. Beard, uh, was he on that 2013 team? Uh, I think he was. I got another one, another former Cardinals pitcher who the Red Sox beat in the World Series, Jason Marquis. Jason Marquis, Ooh. yeah. Do you guys – okay, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to have to send this to you after. But do you – have you guys ever seen that Washington Nationals ad where they're like, he could have gone to the Yankees. Yeah. He could He could have done this. No. He could have gone right? anywhere. Jason Marquis is a Washington National. He picked us. That's sad. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. We're better than that. And by we, I mean my former adopted city. Oh, yeah. That's bad. I, I still can't get over that. The wa- Nobody talks about this, by the way. The Washington Nationals logo is literally just the Walgreens Stop logo. it. No. It is. Same, Come on. No. Same I'm, color. It no. Is. Stop. I said this. It was the first thing I said when I saw that logo as a kid. I, was like, I don't really like How is any legal? Washington Nationals. How is it legal? My it's the first exact year. Same thing. My first year at like players pitching little league, I was the Washington Nationals and we won the Hanson Little League minor wow. league. Dude, what this makes me feel old. We, yeah, you had the Nationals as an op. We had the Expos in my team. <laughs> oh, that's tough. It was the first year that the Nationals, so this was 05 <laughs> when we won the World Series. Shout out Coach Jocelyn. Um, yeah, no, no big deal. I played up that year, I was technically young for the division. I got bumped up because I was that nasty at baseball. Oh, yeah. I was a shortstop that carried that team to the the World Series. Former teammate Billy Sweezy now plays for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Shout out Billy Sweezy. Yeah. Wow. 2005 Washington Nationals Hanson Little League. A place to be. Magical run. I can't Good believe job, you man. have Nationals as a <laughs> Oh, you know what's funny? In my town, uh, we had the one of the T-ball teams was the uh, Yankees, and they couldn't get enough of the dads to coach the team. Yeah. <laughs> that happened in Hanson. The Yankees we were a team any, one year, not enough kids. Like a lot of kids abandoned the team. Yeah, dude, don't. <laughs> yeah, why would you even have the Yankees? All right, yeah, yeah disband it. Gross. I was on the Orioles every year, and I was always disappointed because I wanted to be on the Red Sox, but they were oh, always. Yeah, but the Orioles have cool hats. That was a good time. Did you? Did your towns? Did you guys do like the real MLB hats for your yes. little league? Yes. Yeah. 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 I got to be the Red Sox one year. My buddy's dad was like the commissioner of the whole thing and he would every year he would draft me and like he got to be the red sox because he was like the guy it's like oh let's go i get to be the red in, sox. in uh in dover sherburn like when you got to the major leagues the the majors which was like the big diamond uh you you got a, a color like your team was dover sherburn blue or red green and there were all these cool colors and i got gray oh so cool. I got, it was just blue and gray shout so, out the cardinals oh Tune into wow. YouTube because this kid's adorable. You used to be a first baseman. Copper yeah, leopard. So, the Cardinals. Filling what position out, were you? What position uh, I, was, I put myself there? down. So I would get the whatever number I got. I instantly became like the biggest fan of whichever player in the bigs had that number for that team. So okay. I was number five for the Cardinals in Easy. 2005. So I must have been on the Nationals 2006. Uh, but I put Albert Pujols as my favorite player. Uh, the year before that, I was the Dodgers, and I was number 13 in 2004, which meant Alex Cora was my favorite player for the Are first you year that I ever played baseball. I want to find, because they put on the card, like, your favorite player and everything. So the card says Alex Cora. I don't know where the cor- card is at my parents' house, and I've oh been telling them to find God. it. You, I you, want him to sign it. You need to show that to AC. He would find me the biggest creep in the world, but it would be so satisfying. But you you could explain yourself, and he would he would appreciate that. He would <laughs> he would appreciate that. Well, I mean, you're like just, I would just be like, dude, you were the first player that I really truly cared about following. He you're like, uh, hopefully, find that not creepy. You're like Haku from uh, Spirited Away. You're gonna oh, meet good Alex. Movie, good movie, sick reference. Meet Alex Cora and be like, I've been following you for a long time, Alex. I'm a river spirit. Creep him the fuck out. Get this kid away from me. How do you get a credential? <laughs> no face. Okay. All right, My fellas. I got to get out of here. I got some dinner waiting, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piece us out of this. All right. You guys ready? Piece us out. Any final yeah. thoughts before? Uh, yeah, Spirited Away, great movie. Glad we got to reference it on the show. And Spirit Airlines, hell of an airline that Sammy and I will be taking to Fort Myers in a few weeks. 
Oh, oh yeah. Catch us in uh, Florida. We're going to be down there for uh, spring Before. training, making content just for a few days, just for a few days, but still. The very end of it. The the very it's like right before they go to texas so it's not the best weekend. for last right i'm sitting next to the toilet on the plane let's go yeah <laughs> baby yeah that's a luxury you gotta you should have to pay extra for that oh the toilet seat i paid yeah. 15 bucks extra for that yeah you get to pee anytime you want anywhere know, you want i'm gonna know who uses it for other than pee and i'm gonna give them looks when we're leaving I'm you're gonna like, see that girl pee. walk by and be like you poop out of that yeah, I know what you <laughs> I've got a great bathroom or air, air airplane bathroom story that I'll save for another episode. That'll be yeah. it's a really good story. Cliffhanger. Tune in next week to hear about what Gordo does in airport bathrooms. I'm gonna Thank actually you. I'm gonna make a note to uh to to tell this story as my nuff said for the next episode. So. FBI is going to be tuning in for that bathroom story. Hell yeah. How is this kid up to in airport bathrooms? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of different mile high clubs. Find out which one Gordo is in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, get us out of here. On that regard, this has been episode 45 of Play Tessie. Thank you all for tuning in. But before you head out, stop. Hit that subscribe button. All right. If you're in the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, hit that subscribe, hit that follow button, and rate us five stars and leave a comment. Say anything you want. You can comment on Coop's uh, baseball card. You got to go into YouTube, though. See that. But if you're on YouTube, hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to WEI. We got our own playlist in there. Hit that thumbs up button on the video and leave a comment. Tell us what you think. How'd you like the Alex Pinellas interview? Uh, great dude. We appreciate him coming on. But for Coop, for Sammy, for Alex Pinellas, and for the ghost of Pat, who will be back next episode, it's been Gordo. Signing off for Play Tessie. Toodaloo.